You hear many stories and read many articles about the benefits of apple cider vinegar. Now, is it, is it true that apple cider vinegar offers some significant health benefits, or is it just one of those old uh, myths and tales that have been passed down through the ages? You know, a, a traditional medicine or nutrient that doesn't really work. What's the truth about apple cider vinegar? First of all, how's apple cider vinegar made? It's actually a two-step process. First, uh, uh, the person who's making it exposes crushed apples to yeast. The yeast ferments the sugars and turns it, it turns them into alcohol. Uh, and th then they add bacteria to further ferment the alcohol, turning it into acetic acid. And that's the active uh, compound. Uh, that's what makes vinegar vinegar. Acetic acid gives vinegar its strong sour smell and flavor. Uh, researchers believe this acid is responsible for most of uh, the benefits of apple cider vinegar. Cider vinegar is, uh, apple cider vinegar is contained anywhere from 5 to 6% acetic acid. Organic unfiltered apple cider vinegar also contains a substance called mother, which consists of strands of proteins, enzymes, and friendly bacteria that give the product a murky appearance. Um, uh, it, the, the refined apple cider vinegar you, you'll see is clear. In other words, it's, uh, all the mother is removed. But since the mother, as they call it, might provide some health benefits, uh, when you're buying apple cider vinegar, it's best to buy the organic, unrefined version. Some people believe that, again, that the mother is responsible for most of, most of the health benefits, but there's no real studies to support that. But then again, like I said, the, the mother uh, portion does have additional uh, enzymes and, and nutrients. Apple cider vinegar does not, doesn't contain a lot of vitamins and minerals. It's, uh, it has a small amount of potassium. Uh, some, some of them add a little bit of uh, amino acids, but not very often. Ven vinegar is very good for killing pathogens, including bacteria. People have traditionally used vinegar, vinegar for cleaning and disinfecting, treating nail fungus, lice, warts, and ear infections. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, used vinegar to clean wounds more than 2,000 years ago. Vinegar is also a food preservative, and studies show that it inhibits bacteria such as E. coli from growing in its spoiling food. Uh, apple cider, again, could be a good food preservative. Uh, it could also, might be able, it might be of use to treat acne uh, in a diluted form when it's directly applied to the skin, but there isn't a lot of uh, research to prove that. Uh, the, uh, the most convincing uh, evidence of the health benefits of vin uh, vinegar it relates to uh, helping with insulin insensitivity, which is also known as prediabetes, and uh, actual helping to treat type 2 diabetes itself. Of course, type 2 diabetes is characterized by elevated blood glucose, which is in, in turn is caused by insulin resistance, meaning that the, um, the, the body, uh, for some reason, uh, uh, the, the, the body becomes resistant, the cells become resist, resistant to insulin, and this causes the uh, insulin not to work properly, so the blood glucose level goes up. Uh, uh, with type two, type one diabetes, there's no insulin. You have to have insulin injections. In type two, it ha usually has to do with a level of insulin resistance at the uh, at the level of uh, of insulin uh, receptors on cells, and that can be controlled by diet and exercise. If you, for example, lose a lot of body fat, you do exercise, including weight training and aerobics. Uh, if you're um, if you're heading for diabetes, you could probably ward it off. I myself, this is what I do. I have genetic tendency towards type two diabetes. Uh, I kind of my blood sugar has kind of gone up slightly over the years. I keep myself from going into full blown diabetes by exercising, weight training, and aerobics. As long as I'm doing that, uh, I keep my blood glucose within normal levels. Uh, unfortunately, because of a protein intake. Uh, I can't get my blood glucose levels as low as I want to, but that's just a side effect of the uh, protein because some of the amino acids act like glucose in the body. They tend to elevate the, the blood uh, glucose level. So if you're eating a good amount of protein uh, and you have any tendency to diabetes, you'll find it more difficult to lower your blood glucose levels. Uh, people even without diabetes can benefit by keeping their blood sugar in the normal range uh, because uh, elevated blood glucose, even without diabetes, it's associated with a shorter lifespan. People who live to over 100, for example, always have low, lower blood glucose levels, sometimes as low as like in the 70s and 80s. That's really low. Uh, no, blood sugar is normal up to uh, uh, 
100. Anything over 100, uh, for example, 110, 115, that's insulin resistance. If it goes up to 126, uh, resting blood glucose, then that's usually type 2 diabetes. But the best way to ascertain that is to take a test for hemoglobin A1C, which measures blood glucose over a, a period of several months, gives you a better indication of how your body's, body's body is, is handling blood glucose. Uh, and the best way, of course, to avoid high blood uh, glucose levels is to avoid refined carbs and refined sugar. But avyl cyanide vinegar might have a little bit of effect. I've used it myself for that purpose. Uh, it can uh, uh, a small study suggests that vinegar may improve insulin sensitivity by anywhere from 19 to 34 percent during a high carb meal and significantly lower blood sugar and insulin response. Now, what do you do? Uh, what I've done, uh, and I did found this from research, is before I'm going to eat something that has carbs, especially uh, uh, well, it actually works better with the starchy carbs like bread potatoes, but it'll also work with uh, sugar. You take uh, two tablespoons of, uh, of, of uh, apple cider vinegar, either right before or right or during or right after the meal. But you got to be careful of this because, uh, again, vinegar, because of the acidic acid, it's very caustic and uh, it can actually burn your throat. So a lot of people do dilute the two tablespoons. In other words, they'll take the two tablespoons of, uh, of uh, apple cider vinegar add some water to dilute it so it's not quite as caustic. In fact, recently I was uh, uh, having a meal where I was eating a little bit of bread. So I took out the apple cider vinegar. I poured it in a little cup and did not dilute it. I, I drank it a little too fast. And rather than go down my throat, it, it went down my breathing tube. And it caused the weirdest reaction, very scary, caused my breathing tube to lock. It had the same effect as somebody choking you or having a piece of food stuck in your throat meaning I couldn't get any air. And I figured, I'm done. This is it. They're going to find my body. I'm all done. Thank God it opened up within a couple of seconds before I actually passed out. My, you know, my throat opened up and, you know, and I, uh, I actually haven't taken vinegar since then. I've been a little paranoid. But I took vinegar plenty of times before that with no problems. But if you're worried about it, dilute the vinegar with a little bit of water so it's a little bit less acidic. A small study of only five people uh, showed that vinegar reduced blood sugar by 31.4% after eating 50 grams of white bread. That's pretty good. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good reduction of blood sugar. Again, you have to eat it right before you eat the, the uh, carbohydrate meal. A small study of people with diabetes reported that consuming two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar be right before bedtime reduced their fasting blood sugar by 4% the following morning. Uh, this particular study, if I remember right, the people ate uh, apple cider vinegar with a little bit of cheese, too. I'm not sure what, why they ate the cheese, but that's what they did. Numerous other studies in humans show that vinegar can improve insulin function and lower blood sugar levels after meals. Uh, there, some studies even show that vinegar can help you lose weight. Uh, the, it, vinegar apparently can increase feelings of fullness or, or satiety, so you don't eat. You eat less calories, you eat less food. And that, of course, means fewer calories means you lose weight. Uh, according to one study, taking vinegar along with a high-carb meal led to increased feelings of fullness, which caused the participants in the study to consume 200 to 275 fewer calories throughout the rest of the day. Another study of 175 people with, who were with obesity showed that daily apple cider vinegar consumption led to reduced belly fat, uh, which is um, visceral fat, deep-lying abdominal fat, which is the most dangerous type of fat in the human body because it's very labile, this fat in the, uh, uh, in the lower abdomen is constantly being reduced, travels in the blood to the liver where it's converted into stuff like cholesterol and, and uh, can also cause fatty liver, uh, insulin, insensi insulin insensitivity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. And uh, apparently vinegar can help reduce that. This study showed that uh, taking one tablespoon led to a loss of 2.6 pounds. Uh, that's one tablespoon. If they took two tablespoons, they, they uh, lost 3.7 pounds or 1.7 kilograms. Keep in mind that this study went on for three months. So, you know, the effects on body weight were kind of not that, you know, three pounds is nothing to really rave about, but it's better than nothing, right? So, uh, so, uh, okay. Apple cider vinegar may contribute to weight loss by, again, by promoting satiety or reducing appetite, lowering blood sugar and reducing insulin levels. Vinegar also contains a digestive enzyme 
which uh, inhibits disaccharases, which are uh, enzymes that break down double sugars like sucrose. It inhibits, uh, vinegar inhibits that enzyme in the gut, which means that uh, if you take uh, vinegar and you eat something that has, let's say, sugar in it, it'll cause the sugar not to be digested. So it'll pass right through you and less chance of it being uh, converted into body fat. And so another way that uh, vinegar can help you lose body fat is by raising a substance called AMPK, which uh, basically, uh, without getting, a, I'm going to have an article about that in my Applied Metabolics, but to make a long story short, AMPK is an energy sensor in muscle and in tissues, and uh, it causes your body to use fat as a source of energy rather than sugar and carbohydrates. So anything that raises AMPK is going to help you lose body fat. Uh, and animal studies show that uh, vinegar can help uh, improve heart health. Uh, vinegar can improve several uh, of the common cardiac risk factors. For example, it can uh, help lower cholesterol and triglyceride levels, as well as several other heart disease risk factors. Uh, a study in women showed that vinegar raised levels of nitric oxide in the endothelium or lining of blood vessels. That's where one form of nitric oxide is produced in, uh, in, the, in the blood vessels. Nitric oxide widens the blood vessels, it lowers blood sugar, and helps to prevent heart disease. And vinegar apparently can help raise nitric oxide. Studies in rats have shown that vinegar, again, because of the nitric oxide, the rat studies show that it reduced blood pressure in the rats. And also, by uh, reducing blood pressure, it lowered the chance of uh, kidney disease. Because most cases of kidney disease uh, are caused by uh, chronic high blood pressure. Uh, the kidneys themselves have to have higher blood pressure than the rest of the body to, in order to filter the blood. However, it gets too high. The nephrons or the filtering units of the kidneys literally blow up one by one, and eventually you have failing kidneys. So anything that will help control the blood pressure in the kidneys, and arginine does that too because it's a precursor for uh, nitric oxide, will help you preserve kidney health. Uh, now, uh, vinegar can also uh, help skin health by treating skin conditions like dry skin and eczema because the skin is slightly acidic so you know the uh, uh, applying a little bit of apple cider vinegar probably diluted helps to maintain the acidity of the skin which uh, you know breaks down bacteria and it, and it, re and it helps to rebalance the natural uh, acid base balance or pH level of skin which improves the protective skin barrier uh, now using alkaline soaps and cleansers can irritate eczema, making symptoms worse. Uh, you know, because of its anti antibacterial problems, uh, properties, I should say, uh, vinegar might help also help to prevent skin infections uh, that are linked to eczema and other skin conditions. You know, like I say, some people use di diluted apple cider vinegar as a face wash or toner uh, with the idea that it can, uh, you know, kill bacteria and prevent spots on the face. Uh, but there was a study of 22 people with eczema, which is a type of rash on, you get on the skin. It reported that apple cider vinegar soaks did not improve the skin barrier and cause skin irritation. So you've got to be careful. Now, what's the dosage and the best way to use apple cider vinegar? The best way to incorporate apple cider vinegar in your diet is to use it in cooking. It's a simple addition to foods like salad dressings and homemade mayonnaise. Some people like to dilute in water, like I said, and drink it as a beverage. The common dosages range from one to two teaspoons to one to two tablespoons. Uh, if you're having any kind of blood sugar problems, if you want to control blood sugar, you go with the tablespoon size, not teaspoon size. Uh, and, you, and they mix it with a large glass of water to prevent that caustic effect. Like I say, I've usually taken it straight, but I follow it with, you know, some water. So, you know, because it is very caustic. If you take vinegar straight, I strongly suggest you have some water standing by and just drink some water afterwards. Because the vinegar, I, I could say, it can burn the hell out of your throat. Uh, it's best to start with small doses if you haven't used it. Again, too much vinegar can cause any, any you know, it can cause the tooth enamel erosion, that burning thing in the throat, and so on. So, uh, the best kind, again, the best type of vinegar to use is the kind that's uh, uh, unrefined organic. It contains the mother. You can tell because it's kind of murky in the bottle. Usually, the vinegar comes in clear bottles. The one that has the mother, it'll say so in the bottle also, but it's kind of murky. It's like brownish, light brown, whereas the refined vinegar is clear. That's junk. Don't bother with it. It's, it's garbage. One, one brand that I've used 
been around the longest is Bragg's organic apple cider vinegar. Uh, you know, not that expensive. I keep it in my refrigerator. Like I say, the only time I use it is when I'm eating uh, something like I try to have it with carbohydrates uh, or starch. Again, anything like bread, potatoes. Uh, if you do, it, it, it goes a long way towards uh, lowering the insulin reaction and lowering the digestion of the carbohydrates. So that carbohydrate becomes far less fattening than it normally would if you didn't have it with the vinegar. It's a good dieting trick. Um, okay, so that's about it, I think, for vinegar. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's that covers the main points uh, uh, about vinegar. However, there's a lot more to vinegar than I can say in this video because the video would go too long. So I'm going to be doing a feature pretty soon uh, explaining all the research, including why some of the studies uh, about vinegar are not really valid but they're awful, often quoted on, on various internet sites. This is going to be in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, uh, where I go very, very, very much in depth into my articles, like far more depth than you'll ever find in any video, including my own and others. Uh, it, it's for people that really want to know just about everything about every subject. And, and in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, I cover nutrition, exercise science, hormonal therapy, ergogenic aids, uh, uh, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that really work, uh, women's health and fitness, and many other subjects, nutrition controversies. Uh, you know, when you read my newsletter, you're, you're benefiting from my 58 years of constant study and also, also my empirical experience being in the trenches and gyms. In other words, I, I, in my exercise articles, I often talk about little techniques I picked up along the way in my many years of training that you can only learn by experience. I mean, it's uh, they say knowledge is power, which is true, but you also have to consider experience. And I think I could say offhand that there's nobody who's publishing, currently publishing a digital newsletter or publication uh, relating to nutrition or exercise that can come close to the experience I have, which is again, 58 years. I mean, that, that's equal to about 40 PhDs, <laughs> if I say so myself. Anyway, so uh, you can subscribe at www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I will send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, general medicine, and health. Uh, I also um, have an email portal on my Applied Metabolic site, which is only for current subscribers, who are welcome to send me short questions relating to anything they've read in Applied Metabolics or any other thing, any other short questions they have. I'll be happy to answer, but that's only for current subscribers. I don't answer unsolicited questions. You're welcome to uh, list comments and questions under the videos or even suggestions for future videos. And by the way, I, uh, I just finished, just completed an article uh, for the October issue of my Applied Metabolics newsletter which is, um, I, <laughs> this took me a long time to write. It's, it's, uh, it's an article about, called uh, Nutrition versus COVID-19. Uh, this is by far the most comprehensive article ever written anywhere on, on the way nutrition and general health practices, not drugs, but every natural remedy or preventative technique to help you prevent COVID-19 and also to prevent you, more importantly, if you get COVID-19, the methods I detail in that article will prevent you from, likely prevent you from progressing to the most serious consequences where you have to be placed on a ventilator to breathe. Because then when that happens, your chances of survival drop significantly. Uh, some, some, some studies claim as few as 10% of people who progress to ventilators survive COVID-19. Uh, of course, usually it's people that are already in bad shape uh, have, you know, weak immune systems and, of course, uh, older people, mainly because the reason older people get COVID are more at risk for COVID-19 is because of their immune systems are really weak. A, a, lot of, a lot of older people from just poor dietary habits, lack of exercise, and so on and so forth. But that's just one article that's going to be in my Applied Metabolics. You'll never find that article anywhere else on the internet, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. So sub subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, you go to a local shelter, adopt a dog. They're the greatest. Thank you for listening.